Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel we'll build this, an animated 3D printed LED hourglass. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back! Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, Start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to put together this animated 3D printed LED hourglass. This was the project of the month from the November 2021 Alien 3D UFO Mystery Box. And I thought it was about time that I did a project build video. Even if you didn't get that particular box, you can still make this project. All the electronics are available from online retailers. I've got links for one place in particular in the description. You could probably source them from other retailers at a lower cost, but with a longer shipping time. Okay, first off, I want to let you know there's going to be a little bit of soldering involved with this project. It's not much, just six connections. Most of the wiring is going to use these wires with the sockets on the ends to make the connections. If you're not comfortable using a soldering iron, check with your friends. You may know someone who's good at that sort of thing, and they'll probably be happy to help you out. So before starting assembly, you'll need to download and print the parts. There's a link in the description that'll take you to the Prusa Printers website, and you can download them from there. You'll need to print the hourglass top and the bottom, the hourglass shaped back, and the flat front piece. You'll also need to print eight of the pillar halves, which will combine to become four pillars connecting the top and the bottom. The only part that'll need to have supports enabled is the top, and that's just for the part where the power switch goes. I printed all of these on the FL Sun Super Racer 3D printer. The blue filament is Printed Solids Jesse PLA in the pure cyan color. The white filament is Polymaker's Polyterra PLA in the marble white color. It has little dark flecks in it to kind of give it a stone-like appearance, and I thought it would look like the sand you normally see in an hourglass. Once you have all the parts printed, test fit them. I found that the small pegs at the ends of the pillars needed to be filed a little bit to make them skinnier so they would fit into the top and bottom parts. I also needed to file just a little bit around the edges of the square cutouts on the front. They were just a bit too snug for the LED matrix panels. So make any adjustments you need to make in order for the parts to fit together well before going further. Okay, with all the parts printed and test fitting complete, let's get a look at the project parts. There's an Arduino Nano, which we'll need to load a program onto, a pair of 8x8 LED matrix panels, which will be the animated sand, an accelerometer, which lets the Nano know which way is up, and a power switch to turn it on or off. There's also a connector for a 9-volt battery, a USB cable to connect your computer to the Nano to load the hourglass program onto it, and these connecting wires. You'll need to supply your own 9-volt battery for this project, and you may also need to supply another wire or two. You'll also need to supply about 7 M2.5 or M3 screws to secure the electronics onto the printed parts. Or if you don't have those handy, you can use hot glue. So let's start with the easy things first, mounting the electronics. First, snap the power switch into the top part of the hourglass into the big hole. While you're working with the top, screw the battery clip into the top part too. Next, mount the two LED matrix panels to the flat front plate of the hourglass. They'll each be held into their mounting posts by a pair of screws. Next, mount the accelerometer the same way on these two posts. The accelerometer should be mounted with its electronic components facing the flat front plate and its smooth side facing you. You'll also notice that this component doesn't have its connecting pins soldered in. And I noticed that with the connecting pins that came with mine, they were too short to allow the sockets on the wires to connect to them. That's okay though, since it would have been necessary to solder those pins onto the accelerometer, we can just solder the wires directly to it instead. We're going to get to the soldering in just a bit. But let's do the easy wiring first. We'll use these ribbon cables with sockets on the ends to connect the two LED matrix panels together. There are two sets of them with five wires in each one, and another set with just four wires. 
The matrix panels get connected with the ones that have five wires. Each of the panels has five pins coming in and five pins going out. The input side has a pin labeled DN in the middle of the five pins, and the output side has a pin labeled D out in the middle of the five pins. And so you know which way is up, the accelerometer is mounted at what will be the top of the front part of the hourglass. So connect one end of a five wire ribbon cable to the D inside of the panel that's at the bottom. It's best to just let these lay in whatever color order they come in. On mine, they go from brown to red to orange to yellow to green. I'm putting the brown one on the VCC pin, and I'll use that same pattern when connecting to the other panel. By keeping the color coding the same with the ribbon cables I got, VCC is always brown, ground is always red, D, that's data, is always orange, CS is always yellow, and clock is always green. So connect the other end of that five wire ribbon cable to the D outside of the panel that's closest to the top. Then connect the second five wire ribbon cable to the D inside of the panel at the top, still keeping the same color coding as before. The other end of that cable will get connected to the Arduino Nano in just a little bit. I want to do all the connections to the Nano at the same time. Right now though, it's time to solder. We'll need to solder the ribbon cable with four wires to the accelerometer. And I'm adding a red wire from my own private stock. It has the sockets on the ends of it, like the ribbon cables. I'm doing this because the red wire from the 9 volt battery clip needs to go to the switch, and then another wire is needed to reach from the switch to the VN pin on the Nano. So let's get those wires ready to solder. On the red wire, cut the socket off one end of it. And on that ribbon cable with only four wires, do the same. Cut the sockets off only one end of the wires on the ribbon cable. Next, strip a little bit of insulation from the ends of those wires. Five millimeters is just about the right amount. Give the end of each wire a little twist to keep the strands together. Then, with a hot soldering iron, tin the end of each of those wires, the four from the ribbon cable and the end of the red one. Tinning will keep the strands of each wire together, and by having solder already on the wires, it'll make it easier to solder them to the accelerometer. Oh, it'll probably be necessary to remove the accelerometer from the front panel to be able to solder the wires to it. Pick a wire from the four-wire ribbon cable to be the ground wire. It's hard to tell because most of these are dark, but I'm using the black wire on this set. This will connect to the hole labeled ground, or GND, on the accelerometer. But we also need to connect the black wire from the 9 volt battery clip here. So carefully push both wires into the hole labeled GND on the accelerometer. It's a tight fit, but I was able to make it work. Then, solder those two wires into that one hole. Pick another wire on the ribbon cable to be the VCC wire. I'm using the white one. Insert it into the hole labeled VCC and solder it into place. Do the same for the holes labeled SDA and SCL. Snip the extra wire from the solder joints. Then, reattach the accelerometer to the front panel of the hourglass. Now, get the top of the hourglass, which has the power switch. Solder the red wire from the 9 volt battery clip to one side of the switch. Solder the red wire with the socket on it to the other side of the switch. And that concludes the soldering operation. Hopefully, you survived the ordeal. Next, let's get the code loaded on the Nano. I recently became aware that Arduino has a fully functional Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, that runs in a web browser. The IDE is what you use to write or edit programs for the Arduino boards. Getting it set up is pretty simple, and there's a link to it in the description. Create an account on the Arduino website, sign in, and follow the instructions for downloading and installing the connection agent. The connection agent handles the communication between the IDE in the browser and your Arduino microcontroller board, such as the Arduino Nano. Once you have it set up, 
Connect your Arduino Nano to your computer with a USB cable and select the board type and the port it's connected to so the IDE knows where to send the compiled program. I've already got mine configured for the Nano, but I'll go through it again real quick so you can see what it looks like. There is a menu to select a board and port, so I'll click into that. Search the boards list for Nano, then select Arduino Nano from the list. Then select the port it's connected to from the ports list. On the Mac, this will be some sort of CU.USB serial thing, and on Windows it'll probably be a COM port. For the Nano included in the Alien 3D UFO box, set its flavor to ATmega328P parentheses old bootloader. Click the OK button to finish. When you're first getting into this, the IDE opens a blank sketch. That's what Arduino calls programs, sketches. And it's not entirely blank. It has a setup function and a loop function, but there's nothing in them. If you want to test to make sure the IDE can talk to your Arduino Nano, you can either write your own sketch or you can open up one of the example sketches. Click examples in the left sidebar to see what's available. In the basics category, there's one called blink. Click that to load it and then click the upload button. If all goes well, the green LED on the nano board should blink on and off once per second. If you want, you can save the sketch to your sketchbook with this three dot menu here. And once you've done that, you can edit the sketch to modify its behavior. For instance, by changing the delay values from 1000 to 100 and then uploading the sketch to your Nano, that'll make the LED blink 10 times faster. Anyway, once you've confirmed that you're able to upload a sketch to your Nano, I have some great news for you. DSK001, Fernando, the fine human being who modeled the hourglass for 3D printing, has made all the hourglass code available for the Arduino Web IDE. There's a link in the description. That link takes you to Fernando's hourglass sketch, and there's a big, friendly, add to my sketchbook button that'll do exactly what it says. Go on, give it a click. It takes a few seconds, but once it's added, you can upload it to your Nano. Do that now so the Nano is programmed and ready for installation in the Hourglass. If you had the Blink sketch loaded on the Nano, it'll be replaced by the Hourglass sketch and the green LED will stop blinking. Okay, the Nano is programmed, the LED matrix panels are connected to each other, and the soldering is done. Now let's connect all the things to the Nano, make sure everything's connected correctly, and test to make sure it works. If it does, then it'll be time to put everything together. When you followed the link to download the parts, there's a wiring diagram further down the page. I'm going to refer to that when I'm making these connections. The color coding on the wiring diagram 100% does not match with my wires, and that's perfectly okay. In fact, my colors may not match your colors, and that too is perfectly okay. The important thing is that you can tell by color which connections go where. It might also be handy to find and 2D print a diagram of the Nano with all the pins clearly labeled. Sometimes the tiny, tiny labels on the Nano itself are hard to read. So let's proceed. The VCC pin on the LED matrix panel goes to the 5 volt pin on the Nano. On mine, that's the brown wire. And the ground pin on the LED matrix panel goes to one of the two ground pins on the Nano. On mine, that's the red wire. The DN pin on the LED matrix goes to the D5 pin on the Nano. That's my orange wire. The CS pin on the LED matrix goes to the D6 pin on the Nano, and that's my yellow wire. And the clock pin on the LED matrix goes to the D4 pin on the Nano, and that's my green wire. Now that takes care of connecting the LED matrix panels to the Nano. Next, connect the accelerometer. Connect its ground wire to one of the ground pins on the Nano. Connect its VCC wire to the 3V3 pin on the Nano. Connect its SDA wire to the A4 pin on the Nano. And connect its SCL wire to the A5 pin on the Nano. And then the final connection to the Nano will be the red wire from the power switch. That'll go to the VN pin on the Nano. Review your connections to make sure you have everything plugged in correctly, and then connect the battery. Turn on the switch, and if everything's been done right, your hourglass should start up. Okay, since the electronics are working, let's get this thing assembled. 
I think I want to glue the column halves together before going any further. So a few drops of CA glue to hold each pair together should do the trick. Once those are set, insert all four of them into the base. Don't glue them in, they should just be a press fit and they'll probably be tight. When I was test fitting, some of the little tabs broke on the holes in the base, but that's okay. There should be enough friction to hold everything together. Get the front panel and the Nano fitted into the base. There is a six pin header on the top of the Nano and that fits snugly into this part here. I'm using another Nano I had available for clarity so there aren't a bunch of wires in the way. Then get the back panel of the hourglass onto the base. And finally, the top piece goes on. Take your time to get everything lined up. It took me a few minutes of trying to keep the pieces going in the right places before everything would press down together. Now, mine's not perfect. I can't get everything to fully seat, but it's close enough and it's staying together and it still works, so I'll call that a win. So this Alien 3D UFO Mystery Box project combines 3D printing and electronics into a super cool conversation piece that can sit on your desk or on a shelf. If I had to rate this on a scale of easy to challenging, I'd give it a rating of not super easy but not really super hard either. The part that needs the most skill is the soldering, but there's not really very much of that. I think the hardest part of putting it all together was juggling all the pieces and getting things lined up, but the end result is pretty great. And just a reminder, if you didn't get the November Alien 3D UFO box, all the parts needed to build this can be found on a variety of online retail sites, and I've got some links in the description. Self-sourcing these parts can get kind of expensive because some of the things, like the power switches, you can't easily get individually. You end up buying a 20-pack of them. On the other hand, 20 power switches is only 7 bucks. Of course, you can also shop around and save. Buying things from overseas retailers can be cheaper, but then you have to wait a month or so for the parts to arrive. I guess it comes down to how long you're willing to wait. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great, and if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.